Hello, and thank you for joining us for the 93rd episode of That Show with Billy Wilson. The show brings together artists, musicians, photographers, personalities, and all sorts of fun, interesting people from around the world each Friday for a hangout. This episode, we're joined by a number of interesting people, including YouTube uh, YouTuber Allison, who you can find over on YouTube as Justice for Supper. And we also have our special musical guest, James Olmos, who will be playing a few songs for us for the last 60 minutes of the hour. And... The website on his lower third, you can also find him on YouTube as James Almost Music and also as Acoustic Energy as well. And we also have YouTuber, filmmaker, and sociologist Meg, who you can find over on YouTube as Skyhead Studio. And we also have ph photographer Nikolai McCrary also joining us, and he'll be showing us some photos. And we also have our little furry co host, Mr. Tibby, who will hopefully allow me to pick him up without breaking or like tangling these wires and stuff for the computer. There we go. There is our furry coat. Hello. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> he looks he's, thrilled. He he's grown since the last time I've seen him. Yeah, he's purring away. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Mr. Tiffin. <Tiffany. laughs> Guys, he's so enthused. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're trying to follow along with comments that are coming on the YouTube player and also through the Q&A app. We'll try to periodically go in and uh, check those out, and uh, Tippy will be around during the show. And Nicola, Nikolai, did you want to uh, start you know, showing some of your photos at all? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, I can start okay. with some photos. Yeah, so it appears I'm the only non-YouTuber here, so I'll uh, just share a little bit about the kind of work that I do. Um, typically, let me figure out how to do this screen share. Alrighty. Hold on. Uh, uh, it's in the upper left. Yeah. Oh. Ho. Alrighty. Is that working? Yeah, and uh, we see them on your uh, like the folder view. Oh, oops. Hold on. Let me fix that. Sorry if, about that. If you screen share desktop, we'll see whatever is on your screen. Okay. Or, or, or full screen. I think it's now full, go. full screen. So All right, got there it. you go. Now we see that. Yes. All righty. So I do kind of a combination of landscape and travel photography and food photography. Oftentimes, I like to integrate the two as much as I can. Uh, this recently, I went out with a bunch of Google Plus photographers, uh, Juan Gonzalez, and Joel, and Barry, and uh, you know, we just decided to take some photos about an hour outside of Austin. You know, get some nice starry landscapes, and it's a lot of fun. Um, you know. It's, Night photography isn't something I do a whole lot of, but I decided to just kind of, you know, play around with it. So that was a lot of fun. Um, last week, or about two weeks ago, actually, I went on a road trip over to L.A., and uh, it was part of a Ford Fiesta movement, and I was doing kind of a food blogging tour of the Southwest, and along the way we stopped in Las Cruces because they have some amazing food, and, uh, you know, we saw these Luminario on uh, Christmas, I think it was, and, you know, they're just beautiful. I thought it was a really cool photo, and it really captured the spirit of Las Cruces. Let's see. Here's one of Austin. Um, you know, a couple months ago, I went up um, to one of the highest points in Austin and got a unique view of 6th Street, which, for those of you unfamiliar with Austin, 6th Street is our main downtown hub area. And this little street here is where all the action happens, and uh, it looks so small from up top, 55 stories up. Let's see. Uh, same trip I went on last week. Here's the Grand Canyon. Um, we managed to get there right at sunset. You know, it's really beautiful. Um, there wasn't a lot of food around the Grand Canyon, obviously, but, uh, you know, some, some great photos. Uh, some of the food stuff. I do a lot of food and cocktail photography. Here's a restaurant in Austin. This one's going to be in Southern Living Magazine. Um, you know, I was capturing the cocktail making process, and along the way, the last step, he had to spritz the little orange and light a flame, and you know we had to do about 60 or 70 times before we finally caught the photo, but it came out pretty cool, I think. And here's the full cocktail lineup, which I just think looks really pretty, but maybe that's I love because... that one. Yeah. So this one was pretty cool. And, um, yeah, that's all I have. I mean, I have a few more if we need to later, but, I mean, you know, it gives you a general idea. And that, that skyline of... Um, <clears throat> Of the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah? It's like perfectly level. <laughs> it's like yeah. no, no bumps, no mountains. It's perfect. 
Yeah, it was it was absolutely beautiful. And when you're there at sunset, it's it's incredible. I was fortunate enough that I got to go there twice in the last two weeks. So I went for sunrise one time, sunset the other time, and uh, you know I was able to get photos of both of those. I haven't even started editing the sunrise ones yet. I've just been really busy, but get around to it one of these days. What, what do you typically shoot with? What 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 uh, camera? I just recently upgraded to a Canon 60, and uh, I think it's a great camera. Um, I shoot all on prime lenses right now, mostly wow. because they're cheaper, but they also give good quality. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just kind of make do with what I have, and you know, I think sometimes having limited gear allows you to get unique perspectives that you wouldn't otherwise get. Um, but I, I think that's I mostly just that. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, right now, I think that's also kind of just my excuse for not wanting to shell out some more money on the lenses I actually want. But, but I mean, it is it is true though. So. Sure. How long have you been shooting for? Um, for about two years. Um, I started right around when Google Plus started. So that was, I think, just a little over two years ago or something. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I started around uh, yeah, around early that year. And you know, I started off just doing a lot of landscapes, and then I moved more to portraiture. And I still like to do a lot of landscapes and portraiture, and I still do some of that event photography. But I've kind of started to specialize more in food photography. Um, I take photos of local restaurants if they're having weekly specials or if they need, uh, you know, a, a photo shoot for some type of magazine or anything like that. Um, and I've built up a really good relationship with a lot of the restaurants here in Austin, Texas. And uh, it's great. You know, I get to come in. I get to eat a lot of free food. So, I mean, at the very least, that's fun. Um, I get to try a lot of restaurants that I probably otherwise wouldn't go to. So it's, it's been a great experience so far. But you cook also, don't you? I do, yeah. I, uh, on my, my blog, it's uh, NikolaiEats.com. I kind of use that as my way of experimenting with, um, you know, plating and, uh, 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 you know, just kind of designing the plate and practicing the cooking process and also practicing my lighting and photography. And in that whole process, I ended up finding out that I really love cooking. Um, so I, I kind of like to do a lot of very experimental, uh, weird dishes, things that, you know, might be weird to to hear, but then when you see them, they actually look pretty cool, and you know, like come up with some good things. And chicken eyeballs, <laughs> something oh, like that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah, you study last... photography? No, I was actually uh, computational biology. I was supposed to go to medical school, and I was supposed to be in medical school right now, but I decided I didn't want to do that, and I decided I wanted to be a broke photographer instead. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of similar in a sense in that I, I've also done a lot of photography, but my like degree was in chemistry and biology. Mm -hmm. I've actually found a number of people who have like, degrees in the chemistry, biology, yeah. and math area, but they do photography <laughs> instead. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Us creative types don't do so well in the uh, technical science majors after a while, I think. Some do. Some do. Just not for me. We get so distracted. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And all of us creative guys are like ADD, OCD. We're like, what shiny stuff? I'm what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we all do like ten different things. You know, I'm mean, yeah. photography, yeah. cook. You, you know, I'm sure you have all. You guys have, you know, three other different things that you guys do. It's not just one thing. I, yeah. you know, make mm -hmm. videos. No, you make videos. <laughs> you write music. You do poetry. You paint. You can't draw a straight line, but who cares? <laughs> Straight lines are overrated, anyway. right? <laughs> yeah, it's boring. Mm. Um, um, I, I know that you got uh, Meg and Alec. You both have YouTube channels. Uh, one thing that I've been doing on my YouTube channel is an inspirational video series uh, about mental disabilities. And uh, oh yeah, I saw those. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I did too. Yeah, um, I released a new one this week about uh, a strategy I used to help keep my thoughts on more of a positive side, since uh, it can't be hard, you know, to uh, bring yourself out of, uh, you know, when you're feeling down, that kind of thing. And you know, I, I kind of like to do like more self-help stuff because I don't know, like, I guess medication is kind of necessary in a lot of, you know, situations. But I mean, like. It does also feel good to feel like you can control yourself to an extent by your own means as well. So mm -hmm. uh, that's why yeah. I, I've been wanting to put more videos along those lines. I think that's really cool. Um, and also just the idea of putting them up for other people having the same issue is really important and the best thing about 
YouTube and sharing like that. I've seen a lot of things that are like people going through the same struggle kind of it really does help to just feel like you're not alone in that. Oh yeah. And it it just builds it really builds a community around your channel cuz people once you make more personal videos like that, people just feel like you're they're your friends and that's how that's kind of like every YouTuber that I'm subscribed to, I feel like I'm kind of their friend in a way. <laughs> so I think it really builds community in that way. Really? I think that's, that's so interesting. I was just um, commenting last night on a really interesting philosophical topic on another social network. And I think it's so interesting that, you know, Allison, you talk about connecting with other people, even though you've never seen them, you haven't smelled their breath, you haven't looked into their eyes or touched their fingertips, but you know that they're real and they exist. And in some way or form, you identify with them, either you know, mental, mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is. And that's the community right there. It's the community that's, that's here you know, in my studio or where you're at in your kitchen, I guess. Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> or like in a dungeon where um, you know Zimmerman is, but we won't talk about <laughs> Got that <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I think it's totally interesting. And the thing, you know, uh, you know what, what Billy's doing is he's not only is he bringing awareness, you know, to, to what's going on, you know, within himself and then sharing with other people, but we're identifying. You know, and we don't need to have uh, these different degrees of, of mental illness or, or any aspect of that to, to really, you know, uh, be, be passionate and, and to understand it and to want to support that. So I just think all this stuff is so cool. This whole social networking is just uh, a way to, to, to show your brilliance and, and how, you know, you shine. Now, now I'm talking like a Hallmark card. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> By watching, um, I realized after I met Tessa Violet, um, that was back in November, I realized afterwards how much she really means to me because she taught me so much about that sort of stuff, because she talked about it, she was brave enough to kind of talk about that stuff, and it showed me that, oh, you mean this is a real thing that other people have too, and it's not me being crazy? So, Billy, I think that your videos are going to be like that for a lot of people and just help people in their self-discovery, kind of. It, sure. it also helps me personally, you know, in, in talking about this. It feels like I'm actually tackling issues by actually addressing them instead of just, like, I, I feel like, a, you know, especially as a teenager, I try to, like, cover up my issues and, like, try to just pretend that I'm normal. But I don't really feel like that help. Well, it, I don't know, it didn't completely help me because the issues just keep, you know, existing there and you just have to address them in one way or another because mm -hmm. uh, they just magically go away by just not paying any attention to them. And also, you know, they're just going to catch up with you sooner or later and I'm trying to give Tibby attention right now because he's <laughs> looking mischievous. Multitasking. I found that too very recently, actually, that you can't just push stuff away because it's going to come back and it's going to be... Even, Even more worse. prominent than it was before. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and isn't that odd? Isn't it odd how, you know, we can have so, an emotion, shove it down, and think, okay, the emotion was at this level, and then I shoved it down, and then when you go dig it up 10 years from now, it's like, it's up here. It's like, dude, how did that, wait, why? <laughs> how does, how Where does did you come from? Yeah, like a cancer, it just grows and grows, and it's like, it's waiting to explode. But, oh, I don't quite yeah. understand that. Maybe we should get a psychiatrist in here to help us. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that should be the next uh, show. Yeah. That should be the next guest. <laughs> just bring someone in. Let's talk about our problems and <laughs> feelings. I, I, I've uh, wanted to bring together a mental health edition of, of the show. There's been a number of people who've wanted me to do that. It's just been a little bit hard to orchestrate it because I, I want to actually be, you know, people who actually have mental health, you know, issues and stuff, and they talk about it openly and freely. But I think, I, I mean, like it can also be a little bit hard for some people to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, as well, but other people, you know, they really do want to talk about it a lot. So I, I think that, you know. 
maybe within the next so few months, I might get a panel like that together. That sounds really cool. Yeah, that'd be great. I've kind of noticed that in several several of the YouTubers that I'm subscribed to, all have well, not all of them, but several of them have talked about like touched on mental problems that they have. Like Mitchell Davis, you know, he had what was it, Meg? Yeah, oh, OCD, but in like a really extreme way. Like he yeah. couldn't, like it, everyone see. Uh, well, I'm assuming no, but as the documentary, please subscribe. He was uh, in that, and that was where I learned more about that. that he's like couldn't leave his room until his pillows were straight, and it was like super distressing, like really little things like that. Yeah. And that yeah, he's, YouTube helping him, like was very important to him, and I thought that was like, like wow, like this is actually, you know, like, like trying to explain YouTube to other people sometimes is kind of discouraging, because when most people think of YouTube, they think of all of the like, dumb people hurting themselves, like cats. running into things, cats, yes cats, <laughs> and uh, things, things like what does the fox say, and all of everything that's just really kind of either silly or dopey or stupid, but there's a lot of real kind of deep content, and yeah. it's like, you want everyone to kind of know about it, but usually they don't, so. And it's, it's most, it's dominated by introverts, I would say. Yeah, I'd say so too. Yeah. I mean, like, I know Allison and I have talked about this in our own time, like, um, communities that form around uh, a channel or a person who makes content and it's more like superficial is kind of a harsh word but you know like it's more like the person is entertaining and good looking and does all of the tag videos and just doesn't really contribute on a deeper level but is just kind of you know like funny and oh I know that like you have an opinion on that and how I know it kind of frustrates me sometimes when people look at that and say like oh that's a YouTuber and that's what all like that is what a YouTuber is it's like well not that's a one version of how to be a YouTuber mm -hmm. you know I think they're more of a commodity when, when they go like that because they're kind of like trying to like sell a thing that they're doing oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah rather Definitely. than uh, you know like try to spread an idea or, or a concept or something like that <gasps> Nice, we got like That's not over here, guys. MMA fighting <laughs> going on in the background. <laughs> Is anyone still hearing the like subtle but lovely guitar? Because it's still playing. Yep. The guitar. The guitar. I'm hearing it as much in, unfortunately. There's this this guy who lives either below or to the side of me and he plays guitar and he's really good. Like he's a lovely guitarist, but he plays literally whenever I am doing anything film <laughs> related. Like as soon as I start filming, I can expect that he will begin to play. <laughs> so, but this time it's kind of a nice little background thing. You need to start just integrating it into your videos. You know, plan around it. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> well, I, I saw the one with your roommate in the background, all like, mm -hmm. I think she picked her nose once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious, because I didn't know you could, you could see her. But yeah, she, she's such a trooper with my YouTube shenanigans. I was like, please don't make any noise for like 10 minutes. And she's like, okay, I'll be back here with my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> when I film videos at home, I'm like, Mom, can you go watch TV in the basement? Because I'm going to dominate <laughs> the whole upstairs. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's weird to film when other people are around. Mm -hmm. It's something it's really that hard you're kind of, me. yeah. Is it really uh, hard for you? Well, yeah. The thing is, Actually, like, I don't, don't do it. <laughs> like my parents see that I'm like, you know, they they ask, "Are you going out? Like, why are you dressing up? Or like, why do you have a shirt on?" And <laughs> That's and I'm what like, my mom said me said to me the other day. <laughs> That's like, like, no, I'm making a YouTube video. I'll be That's in my room. So funny. And then they ask you, "Who are you talking to?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, this is my life. <laughs> I, I gotta let my cat out. Just one moment. <laughs> okay. I, I, mean, like, I, I just gotta like, reach over here and just let him out, or else he's gonna destroy books. Your cat seems vindictive. I, I find it just so interesting because 
I mean, you guys are, are so obviously outspoken. You have the, the, the videos on YouTube, yet when – is it just family? You know, is it when family's around, you're like, oh, I should – I'm going to be shy now. Um, <laughs> and then your, your videos are like, hey, I'm dancing in the back. I mean, <laughs> Meg's like, yeah. And he's like, oh, but my, my parents can't see me. Oh, well, it's, it's like – it's not <laughs> – if, if it's really just, um, I don't know about you, Allison or Billy, but for me, it's uh, the idea of trying to film with someone else in the room. It's like all of a sudden, I ha I kind of see I, I see myself the way that they're seeing me in that moment. And when I like, I love YouTube because it makes me seem articulate. <laughs> because <laughs> you can edit out the bad stuff. Yeah, like if yeah. you if you saw if I just posted like a whole chunk of just a chunk of me filming myself vlogging, it would be just there's so much dead time of me just sitting like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so it's and like me stuttering. It's so like it's like oh you're seeing the screw ups basically the person mm -hmm. in the room, and that's kind of why I don't like it. I have to kind of ease into it. Because I just like, well, you're gonna see me at my most idiotic, trying to piece together thoughts. Yeah. I don't know about you, um, Allison. When I made my first music video, my first music video so long ago, <laughs> um, it was. Uh, oh wait, it was my second music video. I lie, but uh, whatever. It was in the bye. kitchen. <laughs> I was doing all these cooking shots from different angles, and my mom, by the time we were done filming, my mom was like, I seriously don't know what you're going to do with this. And then I edited it together, and she was like, oh. So, I don't know, she just doesn't get it when she sees the filming process. That, that's an issue for me, too, where, like, people be like, I, my mom, has, I don't know about yours, but my mom has just let it go. Honestly, like she's just like, I, don't, I have no idea what that's gonna be, but I'm sure it'll make sense at least a little bit. There's one, one, yeah, one video where I'm I'm stuck in 2013. It was on the um, I do a collab channel with uh, other. It's called the Nerd Fighters Info Collab, and everyone watching on that collab, it will now be like, yay, Meg said that because we told her to specifically. Um, but I'm, it's like. There's a lot of me running around because I'm stuck in 2013 and it's like I spaz out and like freak out. Everything's frozen and I run up the stairs and I did a couple takes of that and my mom was just like, came through like, and I don't even know, like just do <laughs> as you were, be on your way. I was like, okay. <laughs> That's probably the best way for your mom to be. Just accept it. Yeah. What about you, James? Do you have trouble filming in front of other people? Do you have trouble filming in front Jenny of your mom, Gaines? James? Again, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's just music, I guess. That's different. Yeah. You know what's interesting, though, is um, something similar to that. I mean, you know, I'm 46 years old. i got three adult children. Um, but when I was growing up, when I was growing up, when I was a young lad, <laughs> um, when I was when I just was getting into writing poetry in high school, you know, freshman sophomore year in high school, and uh, I wouldn't share that with anybody. And then I learned to play guitar right away, and that incorporated into uh, writing songs. Um, and I still would not share that for many many years. Um, so yeah, you know, I I can completely identify with the. The, the shy aspect of all that because you're, you're being creative is the absolute vulnerability. You know, you're exposing, you might as well, you know, stand naked in front of people and go, look at my naked body. <laughs> you know, they're like, no. <laughs> um, I mean, right way. when you first sing the song, this is my first song. And it's like, wow, uh, this, is, this is my baby. It's almost like your first, you know, photograph, right? Um, you, you, you take your first shot, you're like, oh, I don't know if these are like the best, or I want to show, you want to, you know, share them with someone, and then someone just sees them randomly. They're like, dude, like you should take up photography and, and cook too, because <laughs> <laughs> you know. So once you um, start uh, exposing yourself, opening up mm. your your trench coat, um, then <laughs> weird things can start happening. Those weird things might be good things, but <laughs> no. But I, I can identify. I can completely identify. Nowadays, I'll I'll go into a park and 
you know, play music or, or whatever. But still to this day, I don't, I don't play live. It's very rare that I play live in front of people. Uh, I mean, outdoors, like an, at an open mic or something like that. I'll just, um, you know, even my EP, I mean, I have a record and all this kind of stuff. It's all out there, but I, I don't play live. I, I play in here and I don't have to shower. I don't have to brush my teeth. You know, <laughs> just, oh, that's a good point. We're, all good. we're all happy. Nice. Huh. Like, uh, for a long time, when I was uh, like younger, high school years, uh, I was actually excited to talk to you, James, because I, I had a guitar teacher. I, I played guitar for a long time, and I had a guitar teacher that actually kind of like resembles you, like physically. So I thought it was kind of fun to be talking. Yes. Like this? Um, yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. I did work out today. But he was <laughs> he was just as masculine and chiseled as you, um, <laughs> <laughs> but. Like the idea of playing live was something I wanted to like ask you about, and it's interesting that you say that because, like, the idea of doing YouTube is that you get to be kind of as as crazy as your inner self is. But then, you know, I've met YouTubers who are just completely nuts in their videos, and you meet them in person, and they're very mild. You know, like they're very kind of low key. And as I get so YouTube is a place, but for me, playing live is a place for that too. Like once I ease into it. Like once I'm like on stage, I haven't done it in a little while now, but like I feel I get to feeling pretty comfortable pretty quickly, and that's another place where I can just kind of be like, like here's here's my stuff, like here it is, and I can try and make jokes and stuff, but like it's just I just thought it was interesting that you don't like is it and is it because you feel more comfortable in this place that you don't perform live or you just did you used to when you were a little bit younger and now you just kind of don't want to anymore? I've I've performed live. I've you know I've 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 done that. I've performed in I've I've performed in front of you know audiences. Um, I, I I I don't seek the applause. I mean, as much of a ham that I maybe seem to be or whatever. It's like I really don't I I don't seek that applause. I don't I don't you know um, it's neat. It's awesome. But I really just love the intimacy of of just being you know just being and playing and um, yet people respect. You know what I'm doing, and they hear it, and they're like, "Wow, that's really neat stuff." And I would always encourage everyone to to put their stuff out there. Yet we're all different, right? I mean, that's what that's the beauty of 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 just being a being human is is we're completely different, and we're all in a different place, all in different journeys. But um, yeah, it's still cool. <laughs> so, so cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh. We should what, ask Nicola what, about you, what about you guys? What um, I mean, we haven't heard really like exactly what you know Meg and Allison do or Allison. Mm -hmm. is that right? Yes, Allison. You wanna talk, wanna go first, Allison? What do you do, Allison? Um, like on YouTube specifically or everything. We want to know. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> <laughs> dirty details. Yes. Well, uh, let's start. I'll start with YouTube. How about that? <laughs> um, basically, my main motivation for, except the vlogs, just don't think of the vlogs right now. <laughs> um, my main motivation for why I make videos is to capture beauty. Like when I'm making a video of, usually it's nature, because that's what inspires me the most. I just, see something and I think that is so beautiful I want to record it and get it so I can look at it over and over again and make wow. something amazing so that's my main motivation that's why I and I started um, my interest in making videos started with watching Shauna Housen, Nana Lou mm -hmm. and Tessa Violet, Mika Kitty because they do they have the same style I think they just really capture beauty the way that I want to. <laughs> Have you seen some of my nature videos? I, I also do a few nature videos. Have you seen those? Uh, I haven't seen those. Yeah, uh, I, I have a playlist of them over on my YouTube channel. Ooh. I have, Link uh, me. There's four of them. I, I can also screen share it just briefly. Uh, I'll just put an in Hangout Group chat right here for the people inside. The, whoops. Hangout. I believe that's the correct link. And I can also yes, we can share the playlist. Wait. Yeah. Playlist. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
in just one second. If I'm just being material, I have the correct thing that's going to come up. And there he is. Uh, there, this is my. Uh, you see, you can see like the screen share, right? I just want to make certain that everyone's yeah. seeing. Yeah, yeah and, and, and this is my, uh, oh, my nice. YouTube channel right there. That's my uh, uh, series about mental disabilities, and this is uh, the nature uh, video series. I, I can I, I can play a little bit of one of them, but you won't be able to hear it. It's just music anyway. Um, music anyway. <laughs> yeah. Is it my music, Billy? <laughs> I might get like a copyright strike or something. You might. You might. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So mm, this kind wow. of stuff. Wow. What do you? What camera do you use? I just. I, I've been doing photography, you know, with the with the Canon uh, Digital Rebels for a number of years now. So when I finally, you know, just got one with video, I just went out and like these are like. I just immediately went out and started to make them. <laughs> that was beautiful. It's lovely. Yeah, it's it really captured the beauty to bring it full circle. Snow is the best. Uh, oh wow! Snow. There's a snow one. Wow. And they're very short. Like they're just around thirty seconds in length. So they're like you could go through the whole entire series in just like less than two minutes. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really that's, good idea. Honestly. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you take the time to do um, color grading or anything like that, or do you just do it the way you like, captured it? The thing is, is that like I come from more from like the photography like standpoint, and I mainly just use more like like I I I do like I, I'm I'm just gonna get out. Wait, there we go. There we go. I'm just trying to end the screen share, but the window switched as to which one was where. But um, I'm just trying to. There we go. Um, I do uh, like co correct a bit uh, with some of it, but not all of it is like. It's like I I want it to look natural. Like I the thing is like I always aspire to, for things to just look really natural, like really really natural. Like I don't want them to look. Uh, Old or, or, or vintage. <laughs> like, I actually hate that. I, I mean, like, I don't, like, people can do what they want. I, I mean, I just personally wouldn't, I don't, I just don't do that kind of stuff. Like, I just want to make it look exactly like how, you know, just like whatever I'm doing is what, is what I want to make it look like. <laughs> and that's what it's looking like. Yeah. Um, those were really good. They're pretty, very, very lovely. Yeah, those, are, those are great. I, I don't really do like any like hard editing or anything on them. Like I just like the thing is like with your camera, like you have settings where you can like increase the contrast that the video will be recorded at. So you can mm -hmm. actually like before even recording already have your contrast like just jacked right up to the top. <laughs> anyway, so uh, but I, I just tend to you know like have flat settings and I, I add a little bit of contrast and I might color correct later. But I also like I, I, I always like white balance off of something. You know, for each scene, so I, I typically don't need to color correct, but uh, I mean, like, I just use stuff like that, try to make it as accurate as possible to what I'm seeing. Nice. Yeah, definitely. Mm. What about you, Meg? What makes you tick? Me? Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, first, I'm obligated to inform you all that Allison's birthday is tomorrow. Uh, oh. So Happy, that's birthday. Happy birthday! Happy <laughs> birthday! Uh, thank you for asking, Allison, whose birthday is tomorrow. Um, <laughs> well, okay, so Allison can help me out with my description of my channel because it's just it becomes so many things. Where it's like my main motive, like my main motivation in doing it, it has changed so much from when I started that it's kind of incredible to me. And I started out and. This is still definitely like I I am a, a filmmaker, an aspiring filmmaker, and um, I really like video production and directing in particular. Um, so I've made a lot of my own short films and other such things that I. I don't know. The the definition of a short film is actually kind of specific, so I'm probably probably lying to you that they're not as long enough to be short films, but whatever. Um, so that's how it started. And then I started getting more into, like, YouTube stuff, so I started vlogging. And my, like, my channel really took off 
when I started a show called Thoughtbox. That was when everyone started kind of watching. And a Thoughtbox is literally just um, what it sounds like. My thoughts, but they're focused on um, culture, and there's usually an educational element to it. Like, I think it's kind of funny that um, a part of what you put from my description, Billy, oh, hello, hello, to um, <laughs> hello, <beautiful>. was, um, <laughs> uh, that you put uh, sociologist, and when you put that, I was like, oh, don't I sound fancy? But I put I put so I put that kind of when I didn't know what else to call it, and now that I'm here, a sociologist doesn't really sound all that accurate no. to me, and how I like now that I know specifically kind of what that means, but um, I now lately more through my videos, it's not just filmmaking, and it's not just vlogging, but it's educating, and it's um, like activism, spreading certain, um, like spreading around certain causes, and uh, trying to educate in new ways, definitely, uh, that is something that I'm surprised at myself that I'm actually becoming very passionate about, and um, so the only video I could show you is too long to put here, but it's um, basically... It's called it's called learning Marxism, and it's it is what it sounds like is I teach about the subject of Marxism in school of thought. I can hear cats. <laughs> <laughs> Marxism <laughs> cats. Um, but, um, it, but it's in, it's a skit where I am like I it opens on me. I'm trying to learn how to understand Marxism, and then I come. It's like I play every character, and I. Am the main key Marxist thinker is talking to me, so it's like I don't usually see it done that way, and I want to start doing more of that because I've talked to people and they say that it really did help them understand the concept of Marxism better, and it's just I'm rambling now, but that's that's what my channel is all about: educating, educating in a new way, and then my films and art vlogs. Forming a community is really important to me. You're kind of aimed a lot a towards people. And that I am. Yeah. Helping That's others. That's pretty cool. That's excellent. I don't want to talk anymore. I feel like I just took a big <laughs> chunk of time. So you guys can hear Tibby? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> My favorite part of the show, always. Tibby makes an appearance. I just, I just, I, the thing I like most about Tibby being here is that how unengaged the cat seems. It's kind of like, okay, I know. He kind of has angry eyes. Has anybody <laughs> noticed that? <laughs> hey. He's purring. Angry eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Dedicate one of your songs to Tibby. What do you play oh, later? That was an 80s <laughs> song, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Hungry Eyes by... Yeah. Hungry Eyes. It's one of the songs... <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember I, that I don't, song. I, does anyone... I think Allison and... and uh, Billy, I'm not sure how old you are, but I'm assuming you're more in Allison and mine's age range. I'm, I'm 24. That you're 24. Oh, that's... That, oh. that counts. <laughs> that, that could count. Um, that there's, like, <laughs> songs that are older to us. I know snippets of most of them, so... They're not songs I know, but I just, for some reason, the knowledge is there for me somehow. You've heard it in <laughs> movies or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wait, what age range am I in? I don't know how old you are, dude. How old do you think I am? Oh, don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, seem, you seem mid to late 20s. How's that? Okay, yeah, pretty close. Yeah, I'm 24 also. Oh, well, now I feel like a jerk. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's That's okay. mid, right? Yeah, it's 24 is in the mid. middle somewhere. You know. It's the facial hair. Yeah, it helps. Yeah. I should get facial, facial hair. hair. People always think I'm 12. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh! At the table twice. Um, yeah, Allison and I are 19, but Allison okay. will be 20 tomorrow because it is her birthday. It's her birthday. Tomorrow. Awesome. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> um, uh, Allison, is your, is your, you should get a blog, right? Um, well, yes, I didn't say, I don't think I said that. Oh, sorry. I said vlog, <laughs> vlog with a V. Vlog. vlog. It's, a, oh, it's, a, it's a dumb word. Let's be real for a sec. Vlog is a really yeah. dumb word, but it's kind of, it's all I do with my life now, hilariously enough. It's just a lazy word. It's video blog. Sounds so legit. 
kind of like graphic novel and comic book. You know, they're the same thing. But if you call it a graphic novel, it's like, oh, that's legit. <laughs> you sound so cultured. <laughs> I read foreign graphic novels in my spare time. They're French. I have my desk conversation pieces ready whenever we need them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dip into the fishbowl. Topic <laughs> number 12. Add the thought box. <laughs> the th hey, I nice. love that idea, by the Plug. way. I love that line, the thought box. I think it's fantastic. Because yeah, a lot of we don't think nowadays. You know, we just, we kind of act and we do and we, right? We just, we go through the motions and the whole idea of, wow, let's like think this through. Because <laughs> maybe Definitely. if we ask the right questions, we'll find, you know, an answer eventually or, you know, someone can share mm. that. <laughs> I, I appreciate you saying that and I feel the same way about it. And it helps me, like we were talking earlier about how, like, Billy making those videos about um, kind of like, the problems you have sometimes kind of in your own mind, which I can totally uh, identify with, by the way, um, like, helps you work through that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how I feel about doing Thoughtbox, because it helps, like, me think more deeply and complexly, where I have a thought, and it's like, that could be a good Thoughtbox. Well, then I pursue that thought, and I do research on that thought, and it becomes something a little greater. And, like, quick background, because I just think it's kind of funny the way it worked out, was that Thoughtbox was originally going to be something completely different. Not completely different, but vi different enough where I made a logo for that show. And then I ended up just putting it on a video where I was like, like, this is just kind of what I think about this, you know? And, like, and they get into it a little bit, and I, I just put a logo on that video instead. It was originally supposed to be way more educational, where I was just going to research and then kind of regurgitate information. And I'm really glad it didn't end up being that. Because apparently people like it the way it is now. I like uh, it. Yeah. Thanks, Allison. <laughs> You're welcome, Meg. <laughs> Gosh, it's like, it's like Meg, the filmmaker, educator, blogger, vlogger, musician, <laughs> songwriter. <laughs> it's like, when does it end? A socialist, soon to be psychiatrist. Socialist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I probably. I've. I'm I'm not I'm not quite a socialist. I will I know that I just talked about how I taught about Marxism, but I, I'm I would I wouldn't say that I identify as a socialist. <laughs> but I guess I do come off that way when I talk about Marxism. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, I had a lot of socialist themed channels um, comment on that video, and it was kind of fun to get that perspective. So. Cool. Of Have I you guys ever heard of uh, the mental illness happy hour? It's a podcast. Oh. Yeah, I listen to it all the time. It's called the Mental Illness Happy Hour, and be be warned that it's it's it, it's deep. It talks it talks about you know <laughs> really deep personal things. But this guy's brilliant. His name's Paul. I don't, I don't know Paul. It's a I think he's like an Italian last name or something. But the Mil Mental Illness Happy Hour, oh, I'm writing and um, it's a weekly show. The guy's out here where I live in in L.A. And um, I've actually had a friend of mine, you know, go on his show. Um, he's very popular, um, very well known, uh, made a name for himself. And he just kind of sits down. He kind of titles his show, you know, it's not a hospital. It's not this, it's not that. It's like a waiting room that doesn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he interviews these people. He brings his people into his, his uh, little office. And it's just a, um, it's not video. It's all on, um, it's all audio. And it's a two-hour show, and you can go on his on his web page and, and fill out a uh, a questionnaire type thing, very intimate, deep deep questions. And then there's um, forums and stuff you can go to. But if anyone out there is struggling with any kind of sexual abuse, mental illness, depression, drug abuse, you know, you name it, right? Um, then he's touched upon it. He's not a doctor. He's not you know a psychologist. He's just some dude that that. Uh, He's been through it, and he wants to support other people. So I just kind of throw that out there. I listen to it all the time. I don't listen to all the shows because some of them are um, – you look at the titles, and it's like, uh, it's like just really just way too deep. I mean, that's Ooh, how much. intense it is. And huh. it's, you know, the, you know, it's a podcast, so uh, language is 
no holds bar. You can, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna hear all kinds of stuff. And, and right now Sounds it's about awesome. time to get to uh, the musical portion, so it's about time to hand it over to you, James. And uh, awesome. I believe that you should know how to play in studio mode. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, I'll hide the, the other participants in the hangout for while you're playing, and then when uh, you're, you're done a song, I'll bring everyone back and just remember to unmute before you clap, or else you know there's just gonna be silent clapping. That's seen. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, and you can also uh, you know mention anything you know about your site. You can be found over at jamesolmost.com and uh, it's acoustic energy on YouTube, and also as James Almost Music on YouTube. That's it. Okay, so I should uh, I switched over. I should be on my microphone right now. Mm -hmm. And oh, let's save it. I should be on my microphone now. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna. Um, uh, like Billy said, you can go to jamesolmost.com and um, you can download my latest EP for free. Um, it's a six-song EP, and I have a, probably 60 other songs on there that you can that you can listen to. Uh, this is a brand new song. It's called Rescue or Wait. I'll probably sing uh, about three songs tonight. I think I have enough time for that. And um, but this is my newest one called Rescue or Wait. It was. Um, suggested by someone that I should play it. So here we go. You rise, you fall, Breathe into it all You cut You bleed You drown beneath your sheets I fall on the rock Of your love song actually you know that song is not a love song by the way that song is uh that song is about about mental illness and about <laughs> uh, that song is about you know um depression and mental illness and uh you know going through it all i mean lines like you know you cut and you bleed and you drown beneath your sheets it's like these times where we just don't want to wake up period <laughs> and uh, and and that can run pretty deep in some people's lives, but um, we actually can just fall on that rock of love, and that's just like you know the just or I don't know the right word, but you know you have a rock and you have love and you're falling on this thing and it's like sharp and jagged, but it's love, but it's like it's supposed to feel good, but it doesn't, but sometimes it does, and it's like ah, uh, it's confusing as hell sometimes. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of where that song um, that came from. But I'll do another another tune here. Um, this isn't off my EP or anything, but uh, 
it's a it's a, it's a requested song whenever I whenever I sing it online. I do a lot of um, of singing online in a virtual 3D world called Second Life, where I perform uh, about 15 shows a month. They're one-hour performances, and you can hear them uh, live from my webpage. So when you go to jamesolmos.com, um, you can go into the calendar section and look at when I'm playing next. And then I'm usually playing anywhere between 5 and 8 o'clock at night during the week or on the weekends. And uh, just go ahead and click the radio dial, and you can hear me play cover songs and original tunes, and I kind of, you know, act all weird and stuff, <laughs> but, and have fun with people as I as I interact with them. This song is called "Shatter Me," and Billy, thank you so much for having me on your show. Always greatly appreciate it. me bright upon your skin so fair I realize I feel again in the motion of your song I fall through your pain and I've been waiting for my soul to cry bitter kisses on my heart You've come closer than my yesterday Won't you free my pain Won't you free Free my pain Oh, stay with me Hold me like you Feel at home with my soul. Cry with me. Scream your pain into my body. And shatter me. And I've been waiting for my soul to cry. Bitter kisses on my heart. You come closer than my yesterday. Won't you free my pain? Won't you free? Free my pain. Yeah, yeah. Shatter me and set me free. This victory is all I see in you. Shatter me and set me free. This victory is all I need in you. And I've been waiting for my soul to cry. Bitter kisses on my heart. You've come closer than my yesterday. Won't you free my pain? Won't you free? This victory is all I see in you Shatter me and set me free This victory is all I need in you I need all I need Shatter me Shatter me <laughs> That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I really like that one. Oh, right on. All good? Sounding okay? Yep. Listen. Sounds great. Cool. Any thoughts, questions, intriguing, intimate, whatever? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, I just really liked it. You sing with a lot of heart. It's really nice to see. 
<laughs> no, thanks, Meg. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Right on. Well, cool. I'll do um, I'll do uh, one last song here, and this is uh, this is Billy's favorite song. I wrote this. I actually wrote this for Tibby. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, you'll you'll love it. It's it's called it's called I uh, I fall into you. And, um, and I did. I wrote this for Tibby, and it, and it's on my album. You can download it. Uh, from my website, jamesalmost.com. Um, yeah, okay, here we go. The Tibby Song. <laughs> I need water first. Like a quiet storm Breathing in the earth and sky I move over you Tonight Like the diamond sky Rushed in place with love I paint myself Next to you I fall into you Like the sunny Like a midnight mist Floating ghostly over the fields I lay my dreams over you
Furry cat like love to be. Mm. To me. A tibby, you bring me to my knees. Oh, yeah. You beautiful little kitty. That was awesome. Uh, was I was so moved. Oh. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it. It's always great having you on the show, James. And it's been about an hour, hour. So it's about time to end the show. And I think you're still in studio mode, James. I'm sorry? Are you in studio mode still? No, I'm out of studio mode. Oh, oh, okay. I okay. Um, well, I, I, um, I'd like to thank you all, everyone for watching, and for everyone else, for, you know, being part of the panel and, and being part of this. And I do this every week on Fridays uh, at 10 p.m. Eastern. Every fourth week, it's at 4 p.m. Eastern, so I can have a European edition. And if you want to know more about the people who are on the show tonight, in the description for the event or the YouTube player, everyone's links are in there, so you can find who they are and go to their things and all that kind of stuff. And if you want, if you'd like to keep up with my show, you know, those na nature videos and my mental disability series, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can also follow me on Google+, because that's where I post most of the stuff, and you'll also keep up with stuff on there. And I also share my Google Street View obsession through that. And if you'd like to help support me, my projects, my family, Tibby, and uh, the show and everything, you can pledge support and what I do over on patreon.com slash Wilson. And this helps me be able to survive and, and continue doing this kind of work and, and, and doing the show and uh, doing the mental disability series and the nature videos and my photography and, <laughs> and everything. And uh, I'm grateful for any support and all of the support that I have gotten and uh, any support that anyone can give to me. And uh, we'll see you next time. And yeah.